the book of Exodus. And we're in the Old Testament book of Exodus, chapter number 2. The book of Exodus, chapter number 2. Now, I know this morning this is known as Mothering Sunday, and the Lord has given me a message on a mother, but it's not just for mothers. What this mother is going to teach us and what God wants to say to us through this mother is a message for all believers. And we're going to take a look this morning and read from the book of Exodus, chapter 2, and beginning to read at verse number 1, please. Exodus 2, verse 1. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could, and when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with, with slime and with pitch and put the child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the river's side, and when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and, and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him out of the water. Amen. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. Nobody this morning could ever overestimate the influence of a mother. Whether that influence is, good for the, is for the good or whether that influence is for the bad, nobody this morning could ever overestimate the influence of a mother. A mother is a unique person. She's a special person. She's a person this morning that carries with her great lessons. Abraham Lincoln said of his mother, All that I am or ever hope to be, I owe it all to my darling mother. George Washington, the first United, president of the United States of America, said, All that I am, I owe it to my mother. I attribute all my success in life to the moral, intellectual, and physical education I receive from her. It's so true, child of God, nobody knows the sacrifice a mother makes. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 15, it says, She raiseth while it is yet night to give meat unto her household. Nobody knows the sacrifice a mother makes. And nobody knows the bitterness of a mother's tears when her heart breaks. Nobody's tears 
are more bitter than a mother's tears, when her heart breaks, when her heart breaks perhaps over a wayward child, nobody knows the, the bitterness of a mother's tears. Young people this morning, whatever you do, never you break your mother's heart. Your mother's the best friend you'll ever have. And nobody knows also the powerfulness of a mother's prayers. I often think of the Shunammite mother in 2 Kings chapter number, number 4. How she went to the man of God and, and how she prayed for her wee fella that he would live. Nobody could ever value the powerfulness of a mother's prayers. Maybe there's someone here this morning and your mother has been praying for you all your life, and praying that you'd come to know her Savior. And maybe that mother is in heaven now. And if you're ever going to see her again, you're going to have to meet your mother's Savior and come to Him. No. Nobody could ever value this morning of a mother's tears or a mother's prayers. And nobody this morning could value rather the tenderness of a mother's touch. Because there's something about a mother's touch this morning. There's many a time I used to run into the house as a wee fella with a cut knee or a bang in the head. And there's nothing like a mother's touch upon that knee to take the pain away. The old song's right, you know. A mother's love's a blessing. No matter where you roam, you love her while you have her. For you'll miss her when she's gone. But in Exodus chapter 2, we come to a, a mother this morning, and here's how God is going to speak to us. He wants us to look at this mother. Jacobed is her name. And God wants us this morning to look at the glorious marks of a godly mother. And these glorious marks this morning of a godly mother can be and must be applied to every believer's heart. I want you to notice the first thing about this godly mother. I'll tell you she was a godly mother. And you can't beat godly mothers. Godly fathers are good, but there's something about the mother. I want you to notice in verse number 1, there's the foundation of this godly mother. Verse number 1, it says, And there went a man of the house of Levi and took the wife of a daughter of Levi. And here's the foundation of this godly woman. She belonged to the people of God. Tell me this, mother, are you saved this morning? That's the foundation of a godly mother. The foundation of a godly mother is not based on her beauty. The foundation of a godly mother is not founded on her figure. Not at all. Nothing to do with beauty. Nothing to do with her figure either. The foundation of a godly mother this morning is based on her personal relationship and her personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you see, here was a woman this morning who, who loves the Lord and she obeys the Lord. And, and great mothers this morning, godly mothers, are people who know the Lord and know the way of salvation. See, that's the foundation of a godly home this morning. 
that both mothers and fathers knows the love, knows the Lord and obeys the Lord. You see, the children of Israel were in bondage. They knew nothing, only suffering, and now God was about to deliver them. And God had a plan, and God had the person that He was going to use to bring Israel's deliverance. I want you to notice something, child of God, about all of this. God had her hand picked, you know. God knew who through His deliver who His deliverer would come through. And you know, child of God, this morning, it's vital. I want to talk to you young fellas. God has a wee word for you young fellas. Listen, young fella, you pray for your wife, will you? You mightn't have met her yet. You pray for your wife now. Start praying for her. That the Lord would would save her early on in life and bring us together when the time's right. And you young lassies, you pray for that husband of yours. Whoever he'll be, you pray for him. You mightn't have met him yet. You pray for him. And when the time's right, the Lord will bring us together. And you young fellas and you young lassies, you couldn't start praying early enough for that husband or wife of yours. And you pray for them. And mommies and daddies, you pray too for your children's husband and, or wives in days to come. It's important that you pray for your children's partners in life, even at this very early age. You remember Hannah prayed. She was a praying mother. And you remember Samson's mother, the wife of Manoah. You know, she was the obedient mother. She was the, the woman who done what the Lord told her to do when he would be born. And you remember Mary, the mother of our blessed Savior. She was the wee humble mother. She just lived in a, way, in a wee place called Nazareth. Such a humble place, they even said, could any good thing come out of Nazareth. A godly mother. She's a praying mother. A godly mother's an obedient mother. A godly mother's a humble mother. And all Christians should be humble. We heard plenty about it on Thursday evening. And all Christians should be obedient. And all Christians should be praying. And I want you to notice, secondly, in this woman this morning, this great mother, notice in verse 2 the, the fearlessness of a godly mother, the fearlessness. And the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. You know, let's not forget this morning the serious of these moments because Pharaoh left a command that every Hebrew male, when they were born, was to be cast into the river and destroyed. But here's a mother. Bless her this morning. She was fearless. And she didn't give two hoots what Pharaoh commanded. And she looked at her wee fella. She says, I'm not destroying him. You know, in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 31 and verse 10, it says this, Who can find a virtuous woman? Her price is far above rubies. Do you know what virtuous means? It doesn't mean kind and gentle. Virtuous from the original Greek translation means the strength of an army. That's what it means. Here's a woman that was fearless in, in this in the face of terror. She wasn't going to see her wee lad destroyed. You want to know something, mothers and fathers, this morning? In a day to come, we're going to have to be virtuous and take our stand. 
Because in the world in which we are living in the day, they're seeking to destroy our children with all the tripe and the abominations that is being passed in Parliament today. And there's coming a time when we're going to have to take our stand and not let these people destroy our children with abominable laws and teachings. I'm telling you, Jacobed, what a mother she was. She wasn't going to bow under pressure. Oh, she was a fearless mother. Tell me this, mother. Are you afraid of your wee children in these days? Do you think of the nonsense that they're going to be taught in school some of these days? And I think Jochebed took Peter's stand in Acts 5, 29. It's better to obey God than to obey men. When she saw that wean in her arms that day, she knew he was a gift from God. Listen, dear, your wee one's a gift from God. And this morning, she saw that she was responsible for him. And you know what she did? She led her life on the line for her. Do you know, friend, that's what a mother does. A mother lays her life on the line. You see, us daddies, we're all right. But there's nothing like a mother this morning. You know, child of God, this morning as I look at her, Here's a woman this morning that wasn't afraid to take her stand. Here was a woman who wasn't afraid to protect her children. Listen, child of God, it's the duty of all Christian parents, all godly parents, to protect our children in today's world. I'm telling you, Jochebed wasn't one bit afraid of the king's wrath or whatever he was planning to do. Oh, she, she had her child. Oh, friends, I'm telling you, in a day that not so very far in the distant future, do you know I fear for what our children are going to have to be taught in school? Scares me, you know. Well, it shouldn't scare me, because I know the Lord's in control. There's things going on in today's society that never went on in my time at school. And there's things been taught in schools today that were never taught in your day nor my day. I remember, I don't know whether it was Rebecca or Nathan came home from school one day and told Mommy that the vice principal said you shouldn't believe in things in the Bible. Oh, that's nonsense because we really came from monkeys. That's what he said. And the old flesh came up on me and I say as well, Maybe if he took a good look on the mirror, he would realize where he's getting his theology from. It's all right for him to say that. But Colin Tinsley has been put out of schools because he's telling them the truth. This is the day we're living in, child of God. And I'm telling you, we're going to be calling out for Jacobeds and day to come women and men this morning who are fearless. You take a look at verse number 3. We have the faith of a godly, mom, a godly mother. And when she could not, not longer hide him, there came a moment when she couldn't keep him behind the apron strings anymore. He was getting beyond the place where, she could, where, where it could, she could be hidden. And now her faith is going to be tested. And now comes the time when danger is going to be more of a reality. What am I going to do? I can't hide him anymore. And there comes this moment. There comes this moment now. She's going to have to trust the Lord for him. She can't hide him anymore. Do you know, Mama, she reaches that difficult place in her life that you'll know about. 
where you can't shelter them the way you can shelter them now. There comes a time when you have to let them go. And mind you, it's difficult. But you know, this is where Jacobed reached. She reached the point where she was going to have to let go of him and trust the Lord for him. And you know, child of God, this morning, there comes a time in your wee one's life you have to let them go. And I'll tell you, it's painful. It's painful. And here, in Exodus 2 this morning, the world is calling for the death of her son. But her faith places her son above the will of the world. You mothers were young children, and you daddies were young children. Now, you listen to me. See, when you have them at that point where you have them on your knee, you teach them the truths of God and get it into them. Don't be reading them out of tripe. Teach them the Bible stories and the characters of the Bible because that's what sticks with them. Train up a child in the way in which he should go, and when he is old, it shall not depart from them. I'll tell you, it's what they were taught on their mother's knee brings them back in days to come of the rebel. But there comes a time you have to let them go. They won't always be the wee one. They come up to this time of life where you, where you worry sick over them. But you do have to let them go. And this is where you have to learn to trust God because I'll tell you this, too many Christian parents ruin their children by not letting them go and find their own feet. I could take you to people today, and their children today, they're now teenagers and twenties, they don't want to know anything about God, they want to know nothing about church, they want to know nothing. Why? Because their parents drove them over the edge and wouldn't let them live as children. You have to let them go, dear, and you have to let them go, sir. And they have to learn to look after themselves. It's the most difficult period I know, but you've got to let them go. You can't always hide them from the world. You have to trust God. Mind you, when the father of the prodigal son saw his son fellow going out, the younger son going out into the wilds of the world, friend, he didn't stand in the doorway and stop him from going. He had to let him go there. He had to watch the young lad learn for himself. And sometimes, child of God, it's a painful thing to do. And maybe there's somebody in this meeting this morning and you're struggling because your children have reached that age. They're that age where the motor car is coming. And they're that age now where where the temptations of life is going to come to them. But listen, mother, you're going to have to let them go. And the best thing you can do for them is pray for them. Oh, I'll tell you something now. There's a lot to be learned from this mother this morning. The foundations of this godly mother. The fearlessness of this godly mother. The faith of this godly mother. Ah, but look at the faithfulness of this godly mother. You know, God moves in a mysterious way. His wonders to perform. And you know, this day when, when, when Moses' mother, when she makes this wee ark of bulrushes and she puts the wee fella in it and she pushes him out from the river's bank and I'm sure she was wondering what's going to happen. What does the future hold for him? What's 
going to take place. That moment when she let go of him and pushed him out out of the river's bank, I'm sure she worried, what am I going to do? What's he going to do? Oh, Lord, look after him. That's the best thing she ever did was pray. But you want to know something? God was there all the time, you know. Why did Pharaoh's daughter go down to bathe in that very place at that very moment? You don't know why. God worked it all out. Isn't it powerful how the wee babe wept at that particular time? And because of his crying, it brought compassion on her heart. You see, God moves in the affairs and the lives of our children. You mightn't see it at the present. Let me tell you, he does. You know, when I look back and I think of Pharaoh and how the devil tried to outwit God through Pharaoh to destroy the Hebrew people. Didn't God outwit the devil through Pharaoh? And in Pharaoh's household, this wee baby was brought up, and God had his hand upon him. And Moses' mother for those years nursed him and nurtured him, and I believe taught him about the things of God. And yes, and then there came a moment she had to hand him over to Pharaoh's daughter. She gave up her son to save the nation, not realizing it. Listen, I'm never done saying this. Great men of God started off as wee babies, just like yours. Great missionaries started off as wee babies. I often look at them, you know, when they're sitting at the front here, and I keep thinking to myself, is there a wee mod kale somewhere in among that wee crowd? For many of Maud Kells was just a wee lassie like these ones. And I keep thinking, maybe, maybe there's a D.L. Moody, maybe there's a W.P. Nicholson. No, we don't know. For W.P. Nicholson and D.L. Moody, they all started off as babies too. Ah, oh, friend, when I think of Susanna Wesley, the mother of 19 children, where in Britain was such, and Britain was on a real spiritual downslide. Here Susanna Wesley was with 19 children gathered all around her. And she taught them and she doctrinized them in the Scriptures. And out of those 19 children, there was two boys, two of them, John and Charles. And God used them to turn this nation back to God. Tell me this, mother, this morning, are you willing to give up your child for the Lord? That we won on your knee. That we won that you have strapped into the baby's seat could be a mighty man and a mighty woman of God for a day to come. Don't you limit God. Then I want you to notice, finally, the fruitfulness of a godly mother. She didn't see it. Because it wasn't till 80 years after this, 80 years, that Moses delivered the people. Do 
you know what? You know what? You and I this morning could never begin to imagine what God could already be doing and planning in the life of these wee ones. You and I, and not one of us in this meeting this morning, could ever perhaps imagine what God is planning and has already sorted and worked out for the wee, some of them wee ones that is up here this morning. See, the godly, the glorious marks of a godly mother are these. There's the foundation. She's saved. There's the fearlessness she'll do everything she can to protect. There's her faith. And there's her faithfulness. Boys of Jacobed only knew the mighty man that this wee baby was going to be in a day to come. See, when you put that wee into sleep tonight, whether it's in a cot or a pram, You think of a mighty man of God this might be. Or you're putting that wee lassie into the pram or into the cot tonight to tuck it in, tuck her in. You think of the mighty woman that this wee one could be, you know. God bless mothers. Godly mothers. Mothers are a dime a dozen. But godly mothers, only heaven can value their worth. Thank God for godly mothers. May God bless His word to our hearts this morning. We're going to sing our closing hymn, 670.